so we're going to get the engine in, we're going to locate the fire, we're going to search back the most threatened areas, most, most threatened but, but most survivable areas first, and then what am I going to do? Start getting into the ceiling, right, and the walls and start checking for extension. Now one set of rules for this, and I'll give you another set of rules for the outside team, is prioritize the search over extension, right? If, if, the, if the primary is not done, don't screw around hooking ceiling, even if there's fire in the attic. Let somebody else do it. That's why we put a second truck on the fire floor. That's why the engine, like I don't know about you guys, but as the engine officer, I always carry a Halligan bar because you don't want to be screwing around doing this when there's somebody dying in the room next door to you. You get what I'm saying? Clear the search. search over extension all day long. Clear the search first. Right? So that's kind of what we're, we're teaching people about the inside team, right? When we talk about the outside team, the priorities of the outside team are, obvi are, for, are obviously any immediate rescues, right? If you have people at windows or things like that, but that also includes any possibility for a VES, right? If you have a good VES opportunity, that takes priority. Can we be doing VES at the same time we're doing oriented searches? 100%. Burgess told you the story yesterday about he was doing an oriented search and had the door closed in his face by a guy who was doing VES. Very sad. Right? But that's good. That, I mean, whoever gets the victim is good for the victim. Very sad. Right? Whoever gets the victim is good for the victim. So rescue opportunity first and then ventilation as appropriate. This, focusing on this also gives time for what? For the engine to get the water on the fire that allows for this. Right? And then, after we get ventilation, then we focus on the extra ladders and egress, right? Now, you might have to throw a ladder for this. You might have to throw a ladder for this. You might have to deal with egress to deal with a rescue. But what I mean is, I'm a big fan of throwing lots of ladders on a fire ground, and I'm a big fan of a dealing with all the egress concerns. But I'm going to deal with these, the rescue and the ventilation, before I start going with the extra ladders. Does that make sense? Like, I, I want a ladder at every window, but I've also seen fire grounds where somebody threw 20 la ground ladders, but that's all they did, and they missed the opportunity for a good VES. You get what I'm saying? Prioritize the VES over the ventilation, right? Again, you don't want to be on the roof cutting a badass hole while somebody's dying in the room beneath you. I get that, oh, cutting the hole lifts the smoke, and that makes it better for them. That's true, but you know what makes it really good for them? Yeah. Getting them out of the building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm, believe me, I am very pro-vertical ventilation, very pro-vertical ventilation. I'm equally pro-horizontal ventilation, but you want to make sure that you prioritize that first. It, it, there are a lot of decisions that happen at the individual level on a truck company. right? I'm not taking shots at the engine. Make it, you know, doing all the stretches and all that kind of stuff, it takes skill, you know, it, it takes a lot of good work and everything, but what is everybody on the engine focused on? A hose line, and the same hose line. That's what everybody on the engine is doing. It's a singular task, right? What's everybody on the truck doing? Divide and conquer. It's divide and conquer. Multiple people in different places doing different things simultaneously but in a coordinated manner. And if you want to be successful with that, then you've got to make sure that you're teaching people not just what to do, but mindset. Uh -huh.